right, let's take a look at our lesson for today. Today we're going to be looking at counting principles. Um, perhaps you have seen this before, maybe um, a different math class. We're going to go a little bit more in depth. The first thing we're going to talk about is the fundamental counting principle. Okay, so in order to explain it, let me give you an example of how this works. This is a, some fancy math words. Let me just give you an example. So let's say we um, have choices. Let's say uh, we're at a, you know, go to a fast food restaurant or something, and we have a choice of five different kinds of drinks. We have four different kinds of burgers. And we have like three different sides that we could choose from. Okay, given all of those choices, how many different meals could we create? Uh, that's what the fundamental counting principle will find for us. How many different meals could we create? So what we would do is we would take those choices and actually multiply them together. Five times four times three. And see, that would be, what, 20 times three? That would be 60 different uh, meals. So it would be 60 different meals that you could make with that, uh, those combinations. So that's an example of using fundamental counting principle, okay? So now let's take a look at these two concepts, permutations and combinations. Perhaps you've heard those before. Uh, we'll look at permutations first. The key element of permutations is that order is important. The order that you choose things, this is also choosing, the order that you choose things is important. Um, so let's give you some examples. So let's say we've got oh, let's five athletes, okay, and they're running a race. So here's an example. So let's say we have five different runners, and they're going to run a race. And we want to know how many different ways could they finish in first, second, third, fourth, fifth place. How many different ways could that happen? That's what we would calculate if we did five factorial. And we know five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. And in just a moment, I'm gonna show you how to put these in the calculator. Uh, so that would give us how many different ways that could happen um, if we multiplied all of that out. So that's one example. That's an example of this first scenario. Um, how many different ways could someone place or uh, if you have five people and you want to rank them off, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Um, another variation of this is let's say, let's say in that same scenario, we just want to know how, um, how many ways can the five people place in first, second, or third? How many ways could that happen? So that's where we use this little um, symbol, this permutations, it's in our calculator. This is the formula that is programmed in our calculator, but you don't have to memorize that. We're just going to use the calculator to figure that out. And so what we would do is we would look at permutations of five total, um, actually in this case people, and we only want three of them. We only want to know how many ways could I choose three people out of the five. In other words, how many ways could they be in first, second, or third place? And so this um, would, so again, what this would do is this would tell us the first three places. How many ways could um, five people be um, cho cho chosen, or if they I'm run in a race, they win. How many, how many ways could they land in first, second, and third place? And the last one on these permutations is talking about repeated objects. Typically, I mean, for us, this we're really going to use this when we're ordering letters. Okay, so this would um, typically be for letters. Uh, for example, let's say we use that word runners. Okay, let's say we use the word runners. Um, and the way that we would figure out, so we have, let's say you have all of these letters on a tile. How many different ways can you order these letters um, with a tile, with your tiles? This is what we would be finding, where the ends would be the same thing. I mean, moving the ends around wouldn't, um, you know, replacing one with the other would not be a different order. 
So that's where um, we're with, so we have repeated objects. We're not, we're taking that repeated part out. So what we would do is we would do, we count, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven letters, so seven factorial over. Well, let's see how many repeaters we have. Um, let's see, R, nope, I don't have more than one R, so R is not a repeater, U, no. Um, N, I have two Ns. Okay, so that would be two factorial. Um, oh, I do have another R. We have runners, so I have an R here and an R here. And so that would be times two factorial. And if I calculated this out, that would tell me how many ways I could arrange those letters. I'm taking into account that I have some duplicates in there. Okay, so those are some examples of these three scenarios, those three um, formulas, how you would use them. Now let's look at combinations. So combinations, the key point here is that order is not important. It doesn't matter what order you put things in. You know, if you've got three letters, A, B, C, and you just, you know, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, they would be the same set, it would be the same scenario. Um, so let me think, so an example for this, Let's say that you um, are president of a club and you have uh, 20 members and you want to choose five of your members to be on a committee for you. And the way, you know, there's no chair of the committee, you just need five people to be on a committee. So if you did that, would it matter what order you chose your club members in? It wouldn't, would it? It wouldn't matter which order you chose them in. So that's where combinations comes into play. So this uh, combinations is again in your calculator. This is the formula for combinations, which is programmed into your calculator. And so what you would do, so we have 20 club members to choose from, and you want five of them. 20 choose five. And so when you put this in your calculator, it would tell you um, how many ways how many ways could you choose five of 20 members? That's the example we just did. How many ways could you choose five of 20 members? And that's what the number would tell us, okay? Now, before we get into the other examples or the examples on the second page, I would like to show you in your calculator where these things are. Where would you find the factorial and the n and the p? So let's just go to our calculator and let's calculate these things that we just did. For this work, we just need a calculator document. We don't need to worry about the lists or data documents, just a calculator. Okay. So the first example was 5 factorial. So there's two ways, at least two ways, to access it in your calculator. One would be to type 5 and then go to your menu and probability and you see factorial, 5 factorial is right there and then you would just hit enter. Um, there is a shortcut to factorial if you want to use a shortcut. It's down here, right here on this little question mark thing under the enter and there's the factorial as well. So there's a couple different ways you can get to factorial. And so in our scenario with the five runners, there'd be 120 different ways they could finish first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Now let's look at the scenario where we just want to know the first three places. Okay, so we need to do a permutation. So menu, probability. See, there's the permutation right here. And what we would do is we would put in our five runners, that's our total, and then we'd put a comma, and then we want to know the first three places. And so there would be 60 different ways that um, those five runners could finish in first, second, and third. All right, so now let's look at the scenario with the letters. Remember we were doing runners and we were trying to decide um, how to set that up. So we would pull down um, a fraction bar and then we, there were seven letters, so seven factorial over and remember the duplicates, there were two n's, so two factorial times, you have to put a times in there, and then there were two um, r's, so two 
factorial and then enter and that tells us wow there's a 1260 different ways you could order those letters oh that sounds crazy i don't think i'd want to do that by hand um last one was the scenario where remember you have a club and there's 20 members and you want to choose five to be on a committee for you how many ways could you do that so let's go to our menu probability there's our combinations right there and the total number of people we have is 20 and then we want five of them some people say 20 choose five i mean that's a, another way to think about it and so Oh goodness, there's 15,504 ways that you could choose five people out of 20. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Um, so there's a whole big different, um, lots of different ways that you could do that. All right, so for the rest of the work, I'm going to just, we're not gonna pull the calculator up and work through it. I just wanted to show you how to do each of those things. So now we can just kind of focus on just setting it up. And then of course I have already put them in a calculator, so. All right, so let's look at um, our first example. So we've got um, telephone numbers in the United States have 10 digits. The first three digits are area code and the next seven are local phone number. How many different phone numbers are possible within each area code? So the area code doesn't matter. We're not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna put that parentheses, it doesn't matter. Let's see, how do we, we know phone numbers like we have the three numbers, right? And then you have a little dash, and then you have your four numbers. The reason I'm writing this out is because this particular one can't be figured out with one of those straightforward formulas because we have a restriction. Look right here. So we've got, um, it tell, they tell us a local telephone number can't begin with a zero or a one. Okay, so this is considered um, a restriction And when we have restrictions, we need to use, um, uh, basically we can't use straightforward formulas, use um, this kind of scenario when we have restrictions where you list the things out. Okay, so restrictions, we wanna use this, not formulas. Okay, all right, so let's think about that. So we've got, uh, we need a, a digit, one digit, right? We've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's 10 different digits. But for the first number in the telephone number, I can't have a zero or a one, so I don't really have 10 choices. I only have eight choices. So there are eight choices for the first number. All right, now for the next number, let's think about this for a second. For the next number, how many choices do I have? Well, I have all 10 choices now. And for each other number, I've still got 10 choices. I've got 10 choices. So what we do is we multiply all these together. We multiply the numbers together. And we get how many possible phone numbers we could create. And actually it's 8 million. So think about that for a second. There are only 8 million different phone numbers that you could make in one area code. What if you have more than that, more than that number of people or phones in an area code? What would you need to do? I mean, yeah, you would need to create another area code because there are only 8 million numbers available for each area code. Okay? All right, so now let's look at the second one. We've got eight horses running in a race. In how many different ways can these horses come in first, second, and third? Okay, so there's two ways we could do this. We could lay out these choices again. So first, second, and third. Okay, so if I have eight horses running, how many of them are available to get first place? Right, there's eight of them available. Now one of those horses is in first place. So how many other horses are available to get in second place? Let's write seven. Okay, and you see the pattern. So then a horse is in second place. So how many are left to be in third? It would be six. This is gonna give me the same number. Now I'd, the order matters, right? It matters what order they come in. This would be permutation of eight um, things, in this case horses, three at a time. That's gonna be the same thing, whether you put it in your calculator, eight times seven times six, or you use the permutation formula. You're going to get 336 
different ways. That's a lot. 336 different ways that eight horses could finish in first, second, and third. Okay, now number three is very apparent that I'm not a very good speller because I spelled banana wrong. Sorry about that. Um, let's fix this. Okay, that's not how you spell banana. It's B-A-N-A-N-A. -A -N -A. Okay, so I had a, I got a little excited. I put a little bit too many, too many ends in there. So this is where we're doing the distinguishable ways. Like we have these letters on tiles and we wanted to put them in all different orders. Remember, that's the one that has the fraction. So we add up how many letters? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six different letters. Okay, let's see what our duplicates are. Um, let's see, we've got one, two, we've got three A's. So three factorial times Let's see, all the duplicates. Yeah, we've got two n's times two factorial. So we put that in our calculator and it tells us there are 60 different ways that I could arrange those letters. 60 different ways. That's kind of fun. Okay. All right, let's take a look at number four. How many different ways can three letters be chosen from those letters? Does it matter what order I choose the letters in? Is there any indication that it matters? No, there's no indication that it matters. It just says choose three. So we're going to use combinations here. We've got five letters and we're going to choose three of them. And we simply put that in our calculator and it tells us there are 10 different ways that that could happen. Okay, so that's one where order does not matter. All right, now we're looking at our very last one. It's a little bit more complicated because we have more things going on, but let's, let's look at it. So we have a 12 member swim team and we need to form it. Um, and I guess the people that are trying out, there are 10 girls and 15 boys. And for some reason, the team has to have five girls and seven boys. Okay, that's the requirement. So how many different 12 member teams are possible? Well, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to look at the boys and the girls separately. So it doesn't matter the order we choose them in, right? We're not trying to get first, second, and third place or anything. We're just choosing um, team members. So this is a combination. So we have 10 girls total and we want five of them. And, okay, so for our work with probability and stuff, uh, and is the same thing as multiply. If you want boys and girls, then you're going to do, you know, multiply them. So here's the scenario for girls. Now let's multiply that by the scenario for boys. So there are 15 total boys and let's see, how many do we want? We want seven of those. So we would put that in our calculator. Um, what do you think? How big do you think that number is going to be? Hmm, it's going to be maybe a little, probably more than 10,000, you think? All right, so we put this in our calculator and it's actually a gigantic number, 1,621,620 possible 12 member teams. Wow, that's crazy. Okay. All right, and there we go.